Cheers. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if it's your first time and if it's your first time Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button? As some of you guys may know I have been in the process of redoing my home or maybe you don't know But we moved on to the living room So I knew when I saw this grid mirror all over my feed I just had to have it we had to be out with the old and in with the new So in today's video you guys are going to see me take part of my living room from this to this. Before we begin, I do want to just mention that all of the measurements and materials that we use to make our mirror will be listed in the description box below. Now at our hardware store, they didn't have a five by seven piece of ply like we were needing for some of the dimensions that we came up with. So what we did instead was used two of the four by eight pieces of ply and in the store, we actually had somebody help us cut them down to size. So now what you're watching us do is connect those two back pieces together um, to reinforce them. We just used some wood glue down the center to connect the two pieces and then some bar clamps to hold them in place. Oh, and we also added in some bungee cords. These we just found lying around the house and we knew we wanted something to kind of push the two pieces together in the center and the bungee cords literally worked like a dream. Now for the reinforcement part, we were just gonna use some scrap wood that we had in our stash. So we're just gonna measure out exactly where we need to put those pieces on the back and we're trying to space them out as evenly as possible. Then using wood glue and then some screws, we were able to secure those in place. You totally don't have to. We decided to really take our time with this project and we were doing it mostly after work. So this is the stopping point. We, we decided to let the two slats dry overnight to just make sure they were secured in place. Um, but a few hours will also do. Now it's time for us to attach the outer slats and begin to fill out the grid for our mirror. For this, we decided to use the Gorilla Glue, which is a little bit heftier. It's good for wood, metal, and mirrors we saw on there. So of course that will be linked for you guys in the description box below. But now you guys will just watch us. We're just lying down some of that glue along the sides, lying down some of those slats. And instead of putting the nails through the top, we're actually putting them through the bottom so that we have much less to spackle and fill in later. We started off with the glue first, then just clamped that piece into place and cleaned it up a little bit. And then Daniel went in with the uh, nails from underneath the slat. There's definitely a couple different ways that you can do this front part of adding the slats to create that grid. We chose to add all of the horizontal slats first. Um, so we just used some of the vertical smaller slats that we had, plus the mirrors as a measure to kind of lie down the horizontal slat, um, glue that, nail that, and then move on to the next section. You'll also see us using some bar clamps on the horizontal slats because we were nailing them from underneath and we only had the glue at the top. We didn't want them to move out of place. So if you guys decide to go with this same process, just make sure you hold it down before you go ahead and nail it through. So you basically continue to repeat this process until you've gone all the way down your mirror. We decided to make ours four mirrors across and six mirrors tall. And just for reference, the mirrors that we were using were one foot by one foot. Once all of the horizontal slats are laid and glued and nailed in place, then you can move on to all of the smaller vertical slats. And all we did here was use the mirror as a measure. We would put the mirror in place, add the slat, again, glue and nail is gonna be the name of the game here. And we just did this a million times until we got the full grid. Now, you guys will see us use this little suction cup hook. Truthfully, I think we picked these up at the Dollar Tree and we just had them in our stash. We saw someone on TikTok using them to move the mirrors themselves and it worked so well, so highly recommend. Now we have all of our slats in place. Our grid is completely planned out. Um, there were just a few little spaces that we need to fill in with the measurements just being a tad bit off, but do not fret. We're gonna go ahead and fill those in with some spackle and sand those down so we get a nice smooth finish at the end. Remember, we want to spend 
slash save like we're doing a DIY, but we definitely don't want it to look like a DIY. So I really do enjoy taking these couple little extra steps to just really finish that piece off. When the spackle is completely dry, we just went ahead with the electric sander and Daniel realized really quickly that it was a little bit too harsh and was stripping some of that primer on the slats itself. So he just switched over to hand sanding all the parts that we spackle and God bless him for it. While maneuvering it around, we realized it was just a little bit too wobbly and we wanted to reinforce it even more. So we just went back to the store, the hardware store, and we got um, a couple planks of two by fours and we just added a couple on the sides and at the top and the bottom. It was also really helpful for moving the mirror. Next, it is time to prime our mirror. So we're just going in with a flat primer all the way around, focusing mainly on the grids. Make sure when you guys are angling your spray paint, you're getting really in there in all the nooks and crannies. You don't really need to do the centers of the grid because they will be covered by the mirrors. So you can save on some spray paint there. In the end, we ended up using about two full cans of primer. Make sure to let the primer dry down completely. Make sure it's not tacky, dry to the touch. Once you have a good texture there, we can move on to painting it its final color, which for us, it will be matte black. We ended up doing about two full coats of that matte black, again, making sure to get in those nooks and crannies. And then we topped it off with about two coats of that matte finishing spray paint as well. After that dries down completely, now all that's left is to add our mirrors. So using the same Gorilla Glue, we're just putting some of the glue onto the board itself or the mirror itself and on the back of the mirror and setting them into place. Again, using those really, really helpful suction cups. Placing the mirrors in is one of the most nerve wracking things that I think I've had to do for a DIY. I totally did not want to break one at all. When we ordered our mirrors from Amazon, we ended up ordering three packs just to account for if a couple were broken. But we ended up using 24 mirrors for our grid mirror. I would say as you're going through this step, which is really the last and final step to complete the mirror, um, be kind of patient. Some of the mirrors fit really, really snug and some of them went in the slots completely perfect. We triple checked our math and all of the measurements, but you know, you can't get everything exactly right at the end of the day. So just try and maneuver it the best that you can to get that in there and completely secured. For us, there was like a little bit of like a pop once we got a snug one in place and we knew that at that point it was pretty secure. We also added hefty amounts of that Gorilla Glue so you guys will see us really get in there. It's really strong, really heavy duty, um, but we wanted it to be thick enough to kind of just attach that mirror in there as well. And again, I highly do not recommend breaking mirrors. I absolutely love how it turned out and I really hope this was helpful for you guys if you decide to take on a project like this of your own. As always, like this video, subscribe if you guys haven't already and I will catch you guys in the next one.